Kidepo Valley, an outstanding national park hosting some of the country's most endemic wildlife species in the remote Karamoja sub-region. <coughs> <coughs> habitat to the African big game flightless birds and fastest land mammal, the cheetah. Its lifeline lies at the mercy of two dry rivers gliding through the savannah. A stunning landscape with scenic undulating hills dominating its horizon. This untouched wilderness preserves a unique ambience and an authentic African wildlife experience to its visitors. This is Kidepo Valley National Park, Uganda's depiction of a true African wilderness. At the extreme northeastern corner of Uganda lies Kidepo Valley National Park, the country's third largest but most secluded national park. Kidepo Valley lies beneath hills and low mountains in the neighboring Karenga and Kabong districts, close to the international boundaries with Kenya in the east and South Sudan in the north. It is the farthest national park from the capital city of Kampala, accessible by road and air from all corners of the country at all times. From Kampara, the capital city, up to Kidepo, you have two or three options. First option of about 600 kilometers is through Karuma Guru Kitugum. And from Kitugum up to Kidepo, it's about 130 kilometers of Maram Road. The rest of about 470 kilometers using that route is tarmac. You can use to use the eastern route, that is from Kampara, Jinja, Mbare. Then you pass through uh, Nakapripit, Moroto, that is Pianope direction. Then Kotido, Kabong, and you come to Kidepo. Most other tourists prefer to fly to Kidepo. So we have an, uh, an airstrip at Apoka, and uh, we have regular flights. I think around Tuesday and Fridays, we can fly in Kidepo and it has helped a number of them. Planes do bring clients from different parts of the world. They fly in after Entebbe, then they fly in Kidepo here. By 1958, it was gazetted as a Northern Karamoja controlled hunting area and in 1962, it was converted into a national park, protecting the African Big Five game that existed during that time. Wild animals are the ultimate tourist attractions anywhere in Uganda's national parks. But in Kidepo Valley, the attractions stretch far beyond the animals. One of the unique and most unique thing that the visitors come for is to have a look at the beautiful scenery with stunning mountains. We have got uh, the hill called Lomage. Uh, it has got three peaks. When someone climbs over there, he is able to have the, a look at the scenery from one peak to the other. Then we have got uh, the Napore Ranges. They also contribute to the beauty of the uh, park. Morungore Mountain, is one of our biggest water sources that support the conservation area, particularly the Kidepo Valley part. That's where, when it rains, most of the water that you, we have that get stagnant in some parts of the park that serves the animals generally come from. So it's our good water catchment area. This valley is a fortress of the biggest population of African Cape buffaloes in all Uganda's national parks. It's only here in Kidepo where you'll find a herd of buffalo, which is in 
1,500. Where you can drive a kilometer along the herd. And in Africa, you will not find it anywhere else. In fact, many times, Kidepo Valley National Park has been voted among the best African parks. These herds are common sightings traversing along river banks in search of fresh grass and water in the wet Narus Valley. Dry rivers in Kidepo offer precious shelter to the Daga boys while the rest of the herds pitch camp under the shadows of sausage trees. The Borasas palm trees, red thorn acacia, and the iconic sausage trees are delicacies for giants and lofty browsers and common in this valley. During the dry season, large families of elephants gather at Nagusokopire campsite to enjoy some shelter under these acacia trees. It's a scorching afternoon and these giants are rushing in to identify suitable spots for their members, especially the young ones. The calves will spend much of the afternoon resting while the rest of the members feed in open grasslands close enough for their maximum protection. This will enable them regain some energy before embarking on longer journeys in search of water. Kidepo is an expansive valley covering 1,442 square kilometers with a quick and unique impression of its wilderness to the visitors. Kidepo is known as the true wilderness place that you can find in Uganda. Pure savanna grassland, pure savanna woodland, the scenery, the hills surrounding Kidepo, very few roads, public roads, very few communities that you'll find in the park. Big herds of buffaloes and elephants. The Naru's unique valley. The sunset and sunrise. The way it peaks and comes out. Your eyes can see far in horizons without any other physical features interrupting you. So you cannot find those anywhere else. The very reason they call us that this is the true wilderness. I'm very happy to, to sit here and uh, apes are running around everywhere. It's so nice. It's really, it's like a dream is coming true, like since I'm a kid. Even we crossed the gate and then there were herds of buffaloes and it was uh, so overwhelming to see a, a huge herd just two meters next to us. It, it's just so peaceful, you cannot imagine. We have, a, also we have many cows, not buffaloes, but big herds, but it's not the same because they're all domesticated. So we are not used to seeing wildlife or nature in its uh, purity that you expect uh, from Africa. And uh, yeah, when you see it, it's uh, nothing you can imagine. Kidepo Valley National Park is known for its unique crocodile species. They are very, very short very small. We have different uh, species of different birds which cannot be got in other parks they are here. Those are birds which make Kidepo to be special. For example, black-breasted babette we have here in Kidepo. We have a rosering parakeet which can be got in Kidepo and Karamoja apalis and so forth. Also on the side of animals, it's a bit unique. We have the white-haired cob here in Kidepo which will not be found in other parks. Early morning nature walks offer tourists with a wide range of animal species gathered along the tracks before meandering into the scrubs. This is a place where we conduct a guided nature walk. And besides enjoying the animals in this area, you will also enjoy the beautiful scenery uh, with the standing mountains, as you can see over there. And of course, in Uganda, this is one of the parks that you can really enjoy the real nature. When you are out like here, it is you alone and nature. No vehicle, no noise. So you have chances of seeing small mammals, even seeing a snake. 
even seeing a low part that otherwise would be hidden. So we believe the nature walks are aimed at increasing those chances and uh, large like birding is done through that arrangement. We walk in the wild with them uh, amid these animals to see or have that experience of walking in between the, the wild animals. To maintain the status of a true wilderness, limited tracks were opened for game drives, but still offering stunning views of wild beauty well worth discovering. We take people out here in the wild to see uh, the key species and even to uh, enjoy the scenery of the park. Everything was so nice, the, the amount of animals we saw. The, the, yeah, also the way they, they watch out for each other, that was the, even the buffaloes and the zebras. That, uh, the zebras, I also like them. So many different animals, they stay in different groups, but they, they all together, they, 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 don't, uh, they don't fight, uh, they just grazing and chilling and walking around. It was really, it was really mind blowing the, the first, first time we see. Kidepo Valley National Park is dissected by several dry rivers in both Kidepo and Narus Valleys. The Narus Valley in the south is about a quarter of the park despite hosting the majority of wild animals in Kidepo. Most of the water dependents prefer being in Narus, although they visit Kidepo Valley during a rainy season. That's the time when water availability is. The dry spell takes about five to five and a half uh, uh, months and you find that the hollow area, the hollow grass has changed from green to golden. And of course, animals during this time move closer to water points. And the most renowned one is Naruz. Naruz is, is, is blessed with having water from January to January. You've just been crossing a bridge down here. That small water you see flowing in the hollow water in tangent points. This water does not dry, so it holds the biggest number of animals. You find elephants, find giraffes, you find buffaloes, zebras. You can also find cats laying ambushes at the water point because they know that is the only water point where the animals can come and take water from. The valley is home to Narus River, the park's lifeline and the only permanent water source throughout the year. Rothschild giraffes are the tallest mammals in this valley and one of the key species under 24-hour surveillance. By 1996, giraffes in Kidepo were on the brink of extinction due to poaching and other illegal wildlife activities. And this called for immediate intervention from the wildlife body. After realizing that decline, we now embarked on translocation. That in 1996, there were three giraffes that remained here and these were for indigenous uh, grow. So what management did was to move and translocate a uh, few from Kenya, from the Maasai Mara, and they were brought. These ones came and reinforced the theory which were here. Then in 2014, after, of course, we were not happy about the numbers, what we did was also to guide and advise management for more giraffes to be brought in, such that by 2018, there were some giraffes that were brought here, 14 individuals. The population was coming. You can imagine from from five. By 2014, we had 46 giraffes remaining here. 2018, we engaged a translocation from Para. We brought 14 individuals. And right now, as we are speaking, we're happy of the, the numbers. The numbers are coming, we're close to 100 individuals. And these giraffes are now under key species. They call them keystone species. We monitor them on a daily basis. We have labeled them the names. We have a file of IDs. When you are moving in the field, you're able to then identify and say, this is so and so. This is one, so. Their growth has been attributed to the quick adaptation to the varied savanna vegetation coupled with abundant acacia and thorny shrubs found in the valley. A number of conservation activities have been conducted inside the park to ensure safety of the animals and the continuity of its flora and fauna. We do early burning in the park. And this early burning is done in rotational uh, process. Uh, there are established plots along the blocks that we do rotationally. 
the purpose of doing this early burning is to provide large growers to the animals, open up habitats, for, for example, for tourists to have uh, clear views. So, and then the other one is to reduce their movement outside the park. Then uh, number two is uh, habitats monitoring. Already we have uh, a threat in Kidepo called University. These activities under research and monitoring. We discovered uh, about 10 years ago that the park was being eaten by two plants. That is the uh, Arizona abyssinica in Narus. Then we have the dichrostatics in the Kidepo Valley. These activities have also aided the revival of airland figures, which had declined by 2004, still by poaching. At one point, we remained with like eight. We kept, we kept on studying their movement, their population increase, and we were finding that the recruitment was also not doing very well. So we also embarked on a location and we brought 11 uh, elands from Lake Mburu in 2005. They were in an enclosure. The, the purpose of putting them in the enclosure was to, to monitor, to make, get them acclimatized to the Kidepo uh, uh, habitats and the situation. So after a few periods of time, they were released to the wild, and all these went and mixed with the indigenous. And as we're talking now, we have got about 150 to 200 elands suffering here in the park. Most of the habitats in Arus Valley. Jackson's heartbeats are common species in this valley, preferably in open grassland, short enough to scan for any threat. This group spends much of the day grazing while the rest are on guard on these anthill tops. This is common practice in the Jackson heartbeats DNA and any threat is enough to entice their running skills, breaking and turning at sharp speed. But today, they are only exercising. The patas are the common monkeys at the lower Apoka Drive normally feeding on plentiful ground fruits and stems. When food is scarce, spiders are added onto their menu. And to get one, this youngster has to bear the discomfort of sharp thorny acacias. Badas often patrol the fringes of Narus Valley looking for the Abyssinian roller, Papo Huron, Abyssinian ground hornbill, and the Clapperton's Francolin, unique birds in this national park. Some mammals have created an intimate leverage with the birds, scratching each other's backs, and sometimes seeking guidance and safety directions to the nearest water point during the dry season. Kidepo Valley in the north is a semi-arid savanna, enduring the longest dry spells of up to seven months every year. Evident golden grass signifies its blistering conditions that push water-dependent animals south to the Narus. The park derives its name from River Kidepo, a dry river in the area meandering across plains framed by low mountains. During patched season, this river slumbers and sneers with white sand dunes till the next rains come, and when they come, it pours its water into River Nile in South Sudan. It's only in this valley in Uganda where bird enthusiasts encounter the majesty of the common ostrich, and this group is just returning from exile due to the wildfires that befell their fortress. Encouraged by maternal instincts, they search around the entire area, hoping to find their eggs in the ashes on the ground, but all in vain. Abandoned nests are the only remaining signs of smaller bird species that lived here, but migrated to other areas during massive fires. This female dove is one of the first returnees, and it won't be too long before others follow suit to begin a new life in this unrealistic valley. Wildfires are common hazards in Kidepo Valley, usually originating from South Sudan. These fires have sometimes imposed adverse effects to both the resident animals and the neighboring communities. We estimate about 50 to 70 percent of our wildlife either permanently staying outside the gazetted areas or moves 70% of their time into ungazetted areas. 
And this is community land where sometimes you find gardens and wherever they move, they raid the crops. It's unfortunate that uh, the cultivation does not yield the fruits because of the wildlife animals such as buffaloes and elephants. Of recent, the destruction which was done in the sub-counties of uh, Sangar, sub-counties of Kapedo, Kawelakol, uh, Lokori. The elephants are now everywhere. Key wildlife species have been exposed to illegal wildlife activities, including poaching. We have two forms of poaching. We have one which is armed poaching, where they use the guns, and the, the local ones by the communities where they use the wire snares. And basically the one which is armed, it happens on the border. Be to be aware of the South Sudanese civil war. We think it left behind a number of armed groups and uh, from South Sudan, we get a number of armed poaching. And when it's a dry season across the boundary neighboring now communities in Kidepo is where we get the forms of uh, were snares, they were the committee set were snares and wheel traps. Unfortunately, sometimes those traps, the wheel traps, the snares, end up getting some of the species that may not be target poachers, like lions, or hyenas. Several mechanisms have, however, been devised to control the situation. We do send out teams called mobile teams. These are teams which throughout the week, throughout the mass they are in the feed, patrolling, checking the points which are really vulnerable to poaching. And we have also a vehicle for, uh, which is on standby. In case there is a, an alarm from the communities, the standby force has to make sure they respond immediately to rescue whatever is, is going on. We have set up satellites, satellite outposts, like in Tikao, on in Kitgum, Kaket, in Yagago, Katmango, in Abim, Sidok, in Kabong, which are far away from the conservation areas, but may need to respond to the community complaints. We also involve the communities to come in inside the park to share with us, to make sure they feel that this park belongs to them. We handle human wildlife conflicts. Human wildlife conflict is one of the activities that when these animals stray out from the park, they go and do a lot of damage in the community, in the community land by crop raids. Everything is being done to support other initiatives to ensure that we reduce human wildlife conflict, like recruitment of scouts. We shared that we have about 400 scouts that are distributed across the six districts, mainly to support the Uganda Wildlife Authority. This part of the park is surrounded by communities that keep wanting to encroach on the park for cultivation and other transgressions. We have a place like Crow where there is gold in the rainy season. There is a lot of where communities from Kabong and Karenga district invade the park for gold mining. It's one of the biggest threats during the rainy season. Another one is uh, encroachment along the boundary where the communities tend to invade it illegally. But the biggest one is uh, what is happening in the region, the cut riding. These communities, uh, both from Uganda and South Sudan, they use the park as their movement corridor. Recurring land disputes between the park and its neighboring communities have also existed for years and have consequently retarded its expansion programs. For example, where we had the communities of Kacheri in Kotido attempting to encroach Karenga community wildlife area and others in Kitgum attempting to encroach also Karenga community wildlife area. Uh, Karenga district attempting to establish district headquarters within the Karenga community wildlife area and also attempting to encroach on Senkoi. This part of the country had been torn apart by tribal conflicts within the communities 
political instabilities from South Sudan and cattle rustling through its porous borders. This had threatened safety of tourists, but now the situation is under control. We have uh, the, cat the cattle wrestlers from the Sudan who come in the nearby sub-counties to grab their goats, their cows, like in Kawalakol, Lokori, and at times Karenga. So the rangers who are deployed inside the park try to intervene and make sure they, they recover the animals. So the communities really feel that if this park would exist, it would be something that is beneficial to them. And while you are in the park, any tourist, you are 100% safe in the hands of our competent rangers who will always be with you and guard you against any possible threats, be it an animal, some animals are dangerous, and we've not had any incident of a tourist in Kidepo have had any challenges. We work together with our sister force, that is police. They have a unit of tourism police where they have provided tourism police at all lodges to provide the security of the clients. Patched weather conditions and cattle rustling have kept some Kidepo communities in absolute poverty, despite their agricultural background. They may have to continuously rely on the park for their social and economic activities. We do community conservation activities, and some of them include educating the public. We bring in schools for education and awareness, and we visit schools outside. I was employed by one of the lodges inside the Kidebo Valley, that's Apoka Safari Lodge, and that's one of the benefits. And we make sure they also benefit out from the revenue sharing that we collect from the gates. We've so far raised close to one billion, and it depends on the number of visitations. Every visitor, the gate entrance fee, 20%, is pulled together under revenue sharing account. And regularly we invite those proposals through uh, established procedures under the revenue sharing guidance. And we've released various amounts of money. We also have a clinic. We build it out of the, the donation of the tourists that come from the park. You know, the local people make crafts. And these crafts, when the, uh, the tourists come, they buy and then they support people. Uh, the money they, they leave there support, support the people. Accommodation facilities inside the park are located in the wildlife-rich Narus Valley, and here, animals stay within the vicinity of the visitors. Most incoming vehicles are subjected to security checks by this troop while others find precious time for grooming under the shadows of the bandas. A number of eco-friendly, high-end facilities have been erected along forested hilltops overlooking the expansive plains down in the valley. We have our Apoka Hostel, which can take up about 60 tourists per day. And the prices are generally friendly, be it for accommodation, be it the restaurant and this in the middle of the national park where you enjoy a lot before even you reach it. Just within the park again we have Apoka Lodge famous for a long time to host high-end tourists. We have other lodges coming up within the park. For example we have Lonomoy we'll be having a past of about 10 and also high-end We've had a number of business entrepreneurs who have chosen to put up lodges outside the national park, but close to the park. So we think any other tourist out there still has an opportunity to have a bed. Visitors are also treated to the unique Karamojong culture, including their dances, costumes, and traditional housing units known as the Banyata have very, very unique culture, the Kajongs. They wear livestock, and some do uh, crop farming. But the Karamoja culture is unique for Kidepo. You will not find any other Karamoja culture in other, other land. And we think we are proud to be associated with that kind of um, 
touch of resilience of hardened people who are able to challenge every other situation that comes their way. The resilience and fearless character of Kidepo has maintained its glory and now it's on course to recover a path to reclaim its ideal status of being home to African Big Five game, a position it once held in 1970s when the area had rhinos. As a first line of defense, it has strongly shielded its neighbors from the external attacks, civil and tribal conflicts in the north, a leverage being carried on for generations to come. With this sanity, accessibility remains the ultimate achievement to increase the number of visitors to Kidepo Valley National Park, Uganda's true African wilderness. <laughs>